Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about complete, incomplete, and complementary proteins. Um, so a complete protein is also referred to as high quality and incomplete proteins are also referred to as low quality. Now, I personally do not like the term low quality because it implies that there is something deficient or worse about an incomplete protein. Um, but really, the difference is that a complete protein is a food source that contains all of the essential amino acids in one source in the proportions that the body requires. An incomplete protein is a food source that contains most of the amino acids we require, but they tend to be missing one or two of our essential amino acids. So it doesn't mean that that food is worse or that the protein that it that it contains, that the amino acids that it contains are somehow worse, it just means that one or two amino acids are missing. Uh, so it's important that if you are eating a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet, that you're having a variety of different protein sources because each one is going to be missing one or two amino acids, but thankfully different plants are missing different amino acids. So if you're eating a variety of different foods, you can make up the difference. Um, so complete protein sources would be any kind of animal protein. All animal proteins contain all of our essential amino acids in the proportions that we need. So any kind of fish or seafood, um, any kind of meat that can include red meat, poultry, any kind of dairy products, so milk, and then also eggs. Um, there are also a handful, there's a short list of plant proteins that are also complete. So soy, quinoa, buckwheat, hemp seed, spirulina. I think I've also seen maybe one or two others that could be added to this list. Um, but the, the plant complete proteins are, are pretty rare. They're the rare exception in the plant community. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> um, but most plants are incomplete protein sources, meaning that they contain most of the amino acids that we need, but they're missing one or two. Um, so um, protein sources like lentils, beans or chickpeas, rice, any kind of nuts or nut butters, fruits and veggies, grains. Um, and so obviously not buckwheat or quinoa like we see over on the complete side, um, but other grains also like oats, pasta, cereals, and so on. So then we get to a complementary protein. Um, so a complementary protein is when we take any two incomplete protein sources that complement one another, meaning that maybe one is missing one or two amino acids and the other is missing a different one or two amino acids so that when we eat both in combination, they're providing all of the amino acids that we require. So it only works if it's two different plants that are missing different amino acids. It doesn't work if we're combining two plants that are missing the same things, then that's not a complementary protein. We're still missing those amino acids. Um, so we want to make sure that if you are eating a vegan diet, so you're not eating animal proteins, it's really important that you plan your protein consumption well and that you're thinking a lot about combining different sources of protein to make sure that you're getting all, you know, you're missing all of the kind of empty spots where you're missing certain amino acids. Um, now, interestingly, they don't need to be eaten at the exact same time. So they can be eaten at different times, but within the same day is, is usually adequate. Um, something to consider is that in the body, we have what we refer to as the amino acid pool. So we absorb these amino acids from the foods we eat and they circulate in our blood as the amino acid pool and our cells throughout the body will take those amino acids up to use to build whatever proteins those cells are responsible for. So like bone cells or muscle cells, all different kinds of cells are building all different kinds of proteins. So they'll require all these different amino acids and they need them in the right quantity, and they need to attach them in the right order. So if our body is building one of these large protein molecules, and it gets to the next amino acid, maybe it's like lysine or something, and it doesn't, it can't get it in the blood because there isn't enough of it. 
then that production of that protein stops right there. Then that cell has the choice of either stealing it from some other existing protein that maybe is less vital than the one it's building. So it'll break down a protein and steal from it, or it'll just break down its current progress and say, okay, we'll try again later because it doesn't have what it needs to make that protein. So whenever you eat your different sources of protein, the goal is to have enough of all the different amino acids in circulation at all times so that the different cells in your body have all the amino acids that they need to draw from to be able to continue building the proteins they're building without having to steal protein or steal amino acids or break down and, and try again later. Um, so they don't need to be eaten at the same time, but you don't want to go too far um, because you want to make sure that you're always replenishing all of the essential amino acids that you need in your diet. Um, so a couple common examples of some combinations that form complementary proteins are like rice and beans or lentils, uh, peanut butter on bread or beans and corn. So as long as you are choosing different foods that are missing different essential amino acids, then they complement one another and form the equivalent of a complete protein. And in that case, we would just call it complementary. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.